Fintech refers to the integration of technology into offerings by financial service companies to improve their use and delivery to customers. Currently, over six fintechs are considered in Uganda. However, the challenge of enabling the process of trading a product or service remains an abstract in digital financial technology space. DFSPs are very important okay, in the digital ecosystem especially if we look at fintechs, right? So uh, when we look at trade, whether it's online or uh, physical, there's always exchange of money that's happening. Okay, so uh, when we talk about mobile money, most people are looking at key players in the industry like telecom companies, MTN, Airtel, um, but they don't look at uh, the other players in the field. Okay, because probably they don't know about them. While facilitating women-led fintech teams shortlisted by high people for the Women in Fintech Hackathon Season 2, Cleopatra Kanyanyuzi shared knowledge on marketing strategy opportunities for aggregators and developers in fintech. You have to know your customer or the customer segments that you're selling to. Okay? Very, very important. You have to know the customer segments you're selling to. So opportunities out there for young developers like uh, the ladies that we have in the hackathon right now. Okay, so um, uh, with interest, there are, there are agro agro related uh, businesses here. Okay, ag agri businesses here, and they are designing uh, applications that are going to help farmers, uh, different segments like um, uh, and um, needs that farmers have. Okay, so um, in addition to what they are already addressing in the country as Uganda, they can also look at um, refugees. Okay, because Uganda. Is, is home to so many refugees from different parts of the world, okay? And um, these people, the refugees, uh, would want to probably um, live a normal life, like the way they used to in their countries. And, and um, one of the basic needs is food for, for humans, okay? And uh, agriculture plays a big Part, okay, in the in the country's economy, even our well-being, okay. So for them to be able to to probably uh, have land, they don't have to own it; it can be leased, okay. But even uh, ownership, yeah, that that can also be looked at and um, guided uh, by government, most definitely. So if uh, such young developers that we have here can come in with uh, digital solutions that include even uh, that group of refugees, because um, the goal, the, the goal of um, the technologies that we are designing here and each and every other day, is to get as many people included as possible. Also, digital developers have to know the usage of system applications. A very important role in getting uh, these transactions going. For example, if you want to if you want to withdraw money from your bank, you'll find there's um, a third party company, okay, that actually the, the big telecos are going to, to be using in order to help them uh, provide that particular service. So it, um, the applications just come from um, developers, like the ones we have in this room. Okay, so they play quite um, a very big role. Um, and um, we want people, uh, a takeaway point for people who are watching us and the hackathon is that uh, when we talk about mobile money, it's not just about the big players, okay, because I can now get a loan from my Airtel number through a company called Jumo, okay, so they're providing uh, a gateway still uh, for Airtel to be able to to give out loans to their subscribers. So you can see it's not just Airtel at the forefront, but it has um, other people it's collaborating with. Okay, and then uh, when it comes to government, DFSPs, okay, are still um, a, a very important um, integral part of how government rolls out uh, programs and how it can benefit from uh, uh, companies that it runs. For example, uh, Umeme, okay, and uh, National Water, yeah. So people can still, uh, use SSD, USSD codes on their phones to pay for water, to buy power, and uh, these, um, these USSD codes and applications are designed by um, developers, okay?
yeah, like the ladies that we have in this room, actually. It has been day three of the Women in Fintech Hackathon. Participants were tasked to design application prototypes. Uh, my name is Sylvia Bonavana. I am part of Team Total Save. Our team leader is Patricia Mekesa, and we're working on a solution that can help low-income earners to be able to secure the future of their children by saving for their school fees and uh, saving for their health emergencies, for example. And this will help to reduce um, uh, school dropouts for low-income earners, but also because many times they find themselves uh, getting indebted or selling off their properties, so we are giving them an opportunity to be able to save for their children beforehand. And today we've been working on um, a prototype for our product and it has given us an insight or helped us to put ourselves in the shoes of uh, the customers that will be using the product. So with this we are able to know what journey they'll take, how easy it will be for them to use. There are some aspects we thought that we could add, but you know, thinking through the prototype and working on it has helped us to be able to know that, okay, maybe this might not work well. It's better to do, uh, uh, for us to be able to do it this way. So this in turn makes it easy for our users to use the app and also adds more value, uh, more value to it. Yeah, so that's what we've been working on today. And yeah, so far it's looking good. So we are looking forward to present it to the rest of the team. Kira Halima, I am from Team Huggles and we are developing a web solution that is going to help um, NGOs be able to access funding and also receive those funds and disseminate them at a very low uh, rate. So today we have uh, been like uh, having classes on prototyping and also we had a call with the Moja Loop team about how to use Moja Loop and integrating it with our system. So the prototyping session has been very intriguing and insightful. In fact, it was easy for us because we were here last time. And so this time around, we even prototyped before even the session began. So we had our prototype ready. And also for the Moja Loop session, it was so good. We got to know how we can use Moja Loop to integrate it with our system and also get all those benefits that the benefits that come along with it to uh, be used by our users that are going to be using our solution. Um, so I use, we are going to be using an API from Moja Loop that uh, does third party uh, in transaction initiation, the three PPI. And so our users will be able to initiate transactions that are irrevocable, real time. And so yeah, they'll be having fun with our system. We believe that our solution is going to change so many, so much, so many lives because the people that we are targeting, the NGOs, are uh, doing a lot uh, in making sure that the people in Uganda, the people, the disadvantaged people, uh, get access to medical care and health, health services, education services, like they target so many people down. For every mobile money transactions, safety is key for both customers and service providers in the ecosystem. According to Simon Kamia, a software developer, interoperability makes it easy and safer for digital mobile wallets. When you talk of mobile money, people think of uh, the telecommunication services. Yet the actual truth is the transfer of money using digital mobile uh, devices. So it can be a bank mobile, mobile application, it can be future USSD funds. Now, for this to occur, there must be interoperability and APIs. Now, an API enables communication between different systems. So a bank has a different system. A bank has a website, it has a mobile application, but the, also the people that use the, that same bank application are people who are using future funds. So there will come a time when even an ATM, or for example, an ATM has its own system, but how does it communicate and send a notification, a notification to your phone after a withdrawal? That's where the APIs come in. So the interoperability allows us. Why should I go to a bank dedicated to microfinance to borrow and also create an account with them, yet I already have an account with a certain bank of my interest. Because I want to borrow a motorcycle, uh, uh, to get a loan for a motorcycle, then I need to go and open up an account with that certain bank. No, I should be able to stand where I am, use my uh, mobile telecommunication, telecommunication service, or be able to stand where I am, use my real bank of preference, and then be able to pay for a loan.
Participants also interacted with the Mojaloop and Modus Box team via Google Meet for Mojaloop Insights. The, the, the technical documentation of Mojaloop, which goes in quite a lot of detail, has um, three uh, steps in doing payments. We have a discovery phase, which you can see here goes through the account lookup service. And that is to identify which customers belong to which FSP. Um, we have the agreement phase, which is about quotes. So that's agreeing on how, uh, how much is it going to cost the, the payer to, uh, to send money to a payee, etc. And it also gives the ability for the customer to agree to the fees and validate who he's paying to. And we have the final transfer phase, which is a two-phase commit um, to send transfers to the payee and receive the notification back, etc. And, and Hi People is supporting fintechs expand their market reach with interoperable solutions. We are registering a lot of good progress. Part of the things that we keep doing as High People and our partners, the Level One Project, the Gates Foundation, Modus Box, uh, Mojalu Foundation, and Cross Lex Technologies, is ensuring that we disseminate information and resource about um, tools that are available to implement uh, interoperable instant payment uh, solutions that are available to serve the poor. Uh, the fintech space, the digital financial service providers are all challenged with very high costs for creating interoperable payment solutions. And when we come in with solutions like Moja Loop, uh, we're trying to say, wait a minute, there is a better way of doing this affordably that helps these innovators be able to sustainably uh, uh, disseminate and design solutions that help them to keep in business. Teams were mentored on the importance of business case, which helps to develop impactful project solutions. The projects that you see out, by the time someone creates my MTN app or the Momo app, they have built a business case on it. So before you even ask for resources, do you have a business case for whatever you're building, however small? However simple it may be in your mind, it has to have a business case. Because at the end of the day, that that you're building is going to be income generating. Is anyone here doing something to just give out for free? Effort at least. Give it out for free, but let your time and effort be rewarded. So you have to have a strong business case. What is in the business case? Tell me the story of your application, of whatever you're building. Tell me your story. Maybe growing up, you realize that even during the holiday, your parents would not save. Everything was, you know, the money they get, they would eat. And so you create the school PESA app so that they save even during holidays. Time for going back to school, there is money. So you have to have that brief about your project. Why? Why should MTN be interested in your product? It has to be a very strong reason because there are so many products out there. So you have to have a compelling story as to why you're building these projects. And then secondly, have you done a survey? The Women in Fintech Hackathon is sponsored by High People under its Include Everyone program in partnership with Modulup, Modus Box, Crosslek Tech and the Level 1 project. Rita Cabanero, Smart24.